Well, I'm pretty excited. I'm Eli Westenberg, I'm Richard Benzer, and uh, we put this together. We saw it at TED.com and we're like, why not have it at Cornell? And so here we are. Uh, we have some good speakers today, and uh, we're just going to start with the intro video that we just played. Let's get right into it. Our first speaker is Isaac Tate. Let's give him a round of applause. Picture yourself on a boat in a river with tangerine trees and marshmallow pie. Somebody calls you, you answer quite slowly. A girl with colitis go by. Now this Beatles song sounds very dreamlike. Perhaps it's not even a dream you had. But what if you realize that it was a dream within it? And you get this tingling sensation all over your body, your dream body, whatever it is. You realize this is a dream. I'm in a dream and I'm in my head and I can control it. So you have options. You can continue with the dream. It has a path set up for you. And you can follow along and appreciate it more. Because you know it's a dream. You know that nothing can hurt you. And you can smell the flowers and look at the, hear the dream bird singing to you. And you can taste the dream food. I recommend the Chinese noodles. It's delicious. Or you can control it. Because it's all your mind. You can paint the sky whatever color you want. You can grow whatever plant out of the ground you desire. You can make whoever you want appear behind whatever door you summon. And you can turn to the girl with kaleidoscope out. And you can really look into her eyes. And you can talk to her. And you can dance with her. You are lucid dreaming. Now this is an interesting phenomenon that anyone can achieve. Because anyone can dream. Some people say, I don't dream. You don't remember your dream. But if you get a dream journal and put it next to your bed, it's a reminder that you want to remember your dream. You will remember your dream. And the more you remember your dream, the more you'll notice the dream signs. Strange things that don't normally occur in reality. And when those happen, you can do a reality check. You can pull your finger and they stretch. This is a constant within dreams. Hands are very audible. This is my favorite. It always works for me. Sometimes the light switch. You can't control the light level within your second. Sometimes you can cover your nose, but your dream body is paralyzed, so obviously you're still going to breathe. Now, what can lucid dreaming do for you? Well, it has a lot that is not good. It goes throughout the entire span of humanity, from childhood to old age. Our elderly, we're getting so old these days, we have people living up to their hundreds, and their brain volumes are decreasing. 
specifically in the frontal lobe in the hippocampus. Now the hippocampus is where your emotional memory comes up, and that is highly fired off in dreams. But the frontal lobe is off when you're normally dreaming. But recent research has shown that it lights up when you're lucid. Well, if you're using it, you're exercising it. And there are monks in Tibet that practice 24-hour consciousness. They're lucid all the time. Waking, dreaming, sleeping, in between. So what are their brains like? Do they retain their volume longer? Can we teach our elderly, maybe even before they're old, to meditate like they do, to lucidly dream like they do? Will we retain our executive functions longer? I think so, and I want to study that. What about children? They have the highest amount of dreaming than all of us. They have a peak. It goes downhill from there. I'm missing out. I wish I started earlier. It's an untapped well that I also want to study. But the main thing that I'm doing is my honest thesis. Hopefully. I'm an honest thesis candidate. I haven't gotten my results yet, but I hope I'll get in. And what I want to do when I do is study how lucid dreaming can affect us, college students, and our depression, and our anxiety, and our sense of control. Because if you can control your dreams, you have control over some aspect of your life. You are the god of your own little world. And if you can do that in your dream, or if you can do that when you're awake, granted you can't come into existence, but you can just dream. Not many people can do that. You have control of your life. How does that spill over into everyday life? And so, I believe that lucid dreaming can save multiple aspects of ourselves. And it is unfortunate that such an untimely event has occurred that some people tend to not realize the potential they have, the joy and fruits of life. If they lucidly dream, could they have felt some glimmer of hope? Could they have improved their well-being? Enough to go and seek help? I think so. And that's why I have a member of Cornell Minds Matter and fighting for mental health awareness to increase all over campus and hopefully from there on ideas, suggestions, strategies, events that can help everybody, not just engineers, not just pre med, not just pre vet, everybody's stressed. Everybody needs catharsis. And so that's why I believe that the lucid dreaming and Coral Minds Matter we can save the world. Thank you. That's great. Uh, next up we have Brandon and uh, his president of Student Assembly. We're <laughs> <laughs>